Hello, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Pastor Rita Gant and my husband, Pastor Tori and I and our church family at House of Power Outreach welcome you to tonight's teaching. Um, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us, Lord God. We just pray that we would uh, just be open to hear from the Holy Spirit and your word, Lord God, all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, tonight's message is titled, um, satisfied and we're going to talk a little bit about that what satisfies your what what satisfies you reveals the condition of your heart is my byline what satisfies you reveals the condition of your heart so we're going to start in Matthew 5 6 I have it here in the amplified blessed joyful nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness those who actively seek right standing with God for they will be completely satisfied so only God can completely satisfy us, and that happens when we actively seek him and his way of doing things. Matthew 6, 33 in the Amplified says, But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So God promises here to meet our every need when we seek him first. And then one more scripture I have for you right now, Psalms 107.9 in the ESV. He, meaning God, satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. So God desires to fill our souls with good things. He desires to completely satisfy us and uh, so that we are truly satisfied. Psalms 103.5 actually even says, it's one of my favorite uh, scriptures that I quote every day. Um, he will even satisfy our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. So tonight we're just going to talk a little bit about satisfaction and what it is and, um, you know, just um, what it is and, and when it's good and when it's not good. And uh, when it's from the Lord and when it's not from the Lord. So to be satisfied by definition means feeling pleasure when you do or get something that you want. So that's the basic definition. Feeling pleasure when you do something or get something that you wanted, that you want. Simply put, we feel satisfied when we get our way and when we get what we want, okay? So my opening statement was, what satisfy you reveals the condition of your heart. Let's talk about that and a few things that might give us um, that pleasure or satisfaction. We might feel satisfied possibly after a good meal, right? Like we just had Thanksgiving last week and and we might actually feel satisfied after a good meal or we might feel satisfied and uh, after a job completed, a job well done. We might even feel satisfied when we finish a good book or when we see our favorite team win the championship. That might give us great satisfaction, great pleasure. Uh, these are all good and pure feelings of satisfaction. The feeling of pleasure that we get when we do or receive or get something that we wanted. That's what satisfaction is. So now let's talk about some other satisfactions that might not be so pure. How about the satisfaction or the pleasure that we get when we tell someone off, when we give them a piece of our mind, when we tell them like it is? We get a certain satisfaction out of that, right? Um, would we consider that um, or when we tell someone off or when we do something to get back at someone. Would we consider that to be a good and pure feeling of pleasure or satisfaction? Probably not. What about when we do something we know is wrong to get the end result of what we want? Could we call that satisfaction, that pleasure of getting what we wanted, a good and pure thing? So let me offer a few examples of what we will do to get our own way, to get the feeling of satisfaction in our souls, our, our emotions. We might say something that is hurtful to get the satisfaction of hurting someone who has hurt us. We might, you know, do something to get back at someone whom we feel have uh, wronged us. We feel like maybe they've wronged us, so we want to get back at them. Uh, let's go back to that saying something that uh, is hurtful because we feel hurt. That is the most common um, fleshly way of getting satisfaction is, is we want to do or say something that is going to get them, you know, is going to get them back. 
And, you know, the word of God says that vengeance is the Lord. So we're already in the wrong arena there when we're doing that. But we might even plot and plan or devise a way of revenge. And to do this, we might lie, cheat, or even steal to put ourselves in position to get that satisfaction, to get that thing that we wanted. All of these things can reveal to us the condition of our heart if we allow them to. And if we are truly, truly uh, willing to look at what we are doing to get that satisfaction, to get that desire fulfilled, um, we can have a good look at what's really going on in our hearts. So let's see here. Okay, I'm, uh, I just wanted to make sure I didn't skip something. So do you think that when we act these ways, petty, vengeful, or sinful, that the satisfaction that we get is actually complete? No, it's not. Is it even lasting? I would have to again say no. Every time that I have lashed out to feel that satisfaction in my emotions, to feel, you know, like I told someone off or I got, got it over on someone, Every time that I have, have given in to that and lashed out in revenge, the end result has not been good. I may have had a moment of satisfaction, but it has done great harm to my soul as well as the soul of others and has actually added a great cost to the relationship. And sometimes it can actually cost a relationship when we're that petty, when we're that uh, vengeful or, or we're that sinful to get what we want when we plot and uh, plan. So we can even act this way so much so that we lose sight of the right way to act. We can become like desensitized to the fact that this behavior is wrong because we're getting what we think we want out of it. So it must be all right, okay? So that's how we're feeling. And um, we can do it so much that it can become like a, a lifestyle or a way of life for us. And we could just become petty and vengeful and, and sinful to get what we want. And that's, you know, how some people live their whole lives. But as Christians, in order to get to that position, we have to be so desensitized from doing it over and over and over again, because we've repeatedly ignored the leading of the Holy Spirit to do better. And so as believers, as Christians, we ought not to act like that. We don't need to do that even once or twice. We need to cut that off before it becomes such a part of us that that's how we're living our life. Okay? So like I said, that is a result of pushing down or ignoring repeatedly the Holy Spirit's leading to handle it better. Um, I'm going to read this again just, just so you understand. Uh, maybe I didn't say it correctly. We can even act this way so much, the petty, the vengeful, the sinful way, that we get desensitized to it because it feels so good to our emotions. It can even become a way of life or our lifestyle to be petty and vengeful so much so that we don't even feel bad about it anymore. Like I said, that is the result of pushing down or ignoring repeatedly the Holy Spirit's leading to handle it better. The better thing to do is to immediately take it to God. We could say or <clears throat> pray something like this. God, did you see what they just did to me? Did you see what they just said to me? Um, God, it just makes me so angry. Or maybe it makes you sad and you can say, God, it just makes me so sad. You know, cry out to God. Um, God, can, can you help me to get over this? To, you know, just keep talking to God. God, can you help me to get over this? And before I do something that I regret. And God, please help me to forgive them. If you could just cry out to God instead of lashing out in vengeance or in that pettiness, then you're going to come out of it better. When we choose this way of handling things, the peace of God floods our soul and we can walk away from that situation without causing more damage. We will also have the extra benefit of growing and maturing in Christ as we choose this way of dealing with things. And as a continued note of instruction, when we choose to go to God for help, we will need to remember to control our thoughts enough afterwards so that we'll not allow those hurt feelings to come back or those offenses to come back up um, repeatedly in our mind. So without restraint or self-control, getting a hold of them, if we do that, then we're going to end up right back where we started uh, with the anger or the sadness.
So like I said, as a continued note of instruction, when we choose to go to God for help, we will need to remember to control our thoughts afterwards and not allow the hurt of that offense to resurface without restraint, or we could end up right back where we started. So go to God instead of going to yourself to settle it. And then get the peace of God on it and keep the peace of God on it. Don't allow those thoughts or that offense to go on repeat in your mind. Man, I can't believe they said that to me. Man, I can't believe they, they did that to me. Man, I can't believe. You know, if you keep thinking like that, then the offense and the hurt is just going to come back. And you're going to be, you know, in the same position you were before you gave it to God. So give it back to God and then don't pick it back up and control your thoughts. Matthew 5, 6 in the Amplified, this is the, the scripture that we started with. Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God for they will be completely satisfied. If you're looking for a satisfied life, this is the way to get there. I want to be blessed, joyful, and nourished by God's goodness, don't you? What a way to live. Blessed, joyful, and nourished by God's goodness. So that is for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Well, what is righteousness? We talked about this a little bit last week. It is being made right by God, first and foremost, and then living right by choosing to do the right things. Okay? Those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. When we seek God's way of doing things, we are left with true and complete satisfaction, not the fleeting kind that only satisfies our flesh or our emotions for the moment. Let what satisfies you reveal to you the condition of your heart. And if there needs to be some cleanup happening there, then you can allow the Holy Spirit, please allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you get your heart cleaned up so that you can live a better life. I'm going to go back a little bit of a ways here and just talk a little bit about, I'm going to elaborate just a little bit about what we might say or do to get that immediate satisfaction when somebody hurts us. It's so common. When somebody hurts us, it's natural to lash back or to yell back or to do what you can to get them to, you know, to hurt them back. And God is saying that is just not the best way for us to live. It's just not. We need to get our satisfaction from God, not from, from the, um, the emotions we talked a little bit about that, how you can't count on your emotions. You can't base your life on your emotions. We talked about that last week. So we, you know, might do something to get back at somebody who we feel like has wronged us. We might plot and plan or devise a way of revenge. Uh, oftentimes we might lie, cheat, or even steal to put ourselves in a position to get what we want. All of these things. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a big lie, a big cheat, or a big, uh, you know, steal to get what we want. It could be small. It could be um, just a little, a little white lie or a little, you know, I'm just going to take this, you know, or whatever. Um, little things that I know in my heart, like whenever I, I know this is silly, but I believe that when you love someone, you, you should go the extra mile for them and you should try your best to love them the best that you can. So like, even when I cook like two steaks, I'll make sure that my husband gets the best one, you know, or if I am out with a friend and we're uh, having dinner and we split something, I want to make sure that my friend gets the best one. So when we love someone, we're going to go the extra mile to love them. So what happens when we're working on loving someone and they hurt us? We need to go the extra mile to prefer them, to put them first, to love them because love never fails. And if we can be the bigger person and show that love by restraining our emotions, restraining ourself from coming back at them, then we're going to grow. We're going to grow and the relationship is going to grow and be better. And so I just want to encourage you that if you really want true satisfaction in life, you're going to have to go the extra mile like what Pastor just preached about last week. You're going to need to go a little further and do a little more and... Um, and when you do, you, you know, you really can't outgive God. When you give doing what is what you know to do is right, then God's going to make sure that you're taken care of. He's going to make sure that that you're avenged if need be. And he's going to make sure that you have the best of things. 
and that you're completely satisfied. So instead of using that moment to get your satisfaction in your flesh or your emotions, take that moment to just take a minute and just take a moment to calm yourself and go off and just cry out to God, pray to God. And sometimes you may even have to bite your tongue. <laughs> I've had to do that before. I'm like, oh my gosh, God, did you see that? Can you believe that? And just, you know, when you go to God with all these little things, it really establishes a connection between you and him that is unshakable. And that's where your help comes from, the Lord. So why wouldn't you cry out to him? If you just try to help yourself and get the satisfaction that you need for the moment, then you're going to end up with a lot of broken relationships. And you're going to not end up satisfied. You're going to end up alone. So be careful. So when we seek God's way of doing things, we are left with true and complete satisfaction, not the fleeting kind that only satisfies our flesh or our emotions for the moment. Let what satisfies you reveal to you the condition of your heart. What do you get great satisfaction out of? If there needs to be any cleanup happening there, allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you to clean it up and live a better life. Living for God and choosing to do what's right is simple, but it isn't always easy, is it? It's simple. It's not complicated, but sometimes it's hard for our emotions if we don't get control of them. Making the choice to do what you know is right is always the better choice and will lead to the most complete satisfaction and lasting satisfaction in your life, even though your emotions may not agree with you at the time, all right? I'm going to say that again. Making the choice to do what you know is right is always the better choice and will lead to the most complete and lasting satisfaction, even though your emotions may not agree <laughs> at the time. If you love God, the deepest part of who you truly are will rejoice and be satisfied with choosing God's way. And ultimately, your soul, your emotions will feel that complete satisfaction as well. So if you love God, the deepest part of who you truly are is going to be, is going to rejoice and be satisfied with choosing God's way. And God's way is the best way. Trusting God by choosing to act right goes a long way toward living a completely satisfied life. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to, to live a life of meaning and purpose, a, la a, a life of a long and lasting relationship. You know, that's the true treasure of this world. It's not riches. It's not what you can get or what you can have. How many clothes or shoes or cars or houses. That's not the true treasure of this world. The true treasure of this world is relationship. It's people. And uh, you, you may not want to hear that, but that is what is most important. And if we keep sabotaging our relationships by getting immediate satisfaction because we want to speak our mind, then we are sabotaging our treasure and stealing from ourselves, basically. So I just want to encourage you tonight to choose to hunger and thirst for righteousness and actively seek right standing with God. Seek the right thing to do that God would have you do. For they, those that do that, will be completely satisfied. And then let what satisfies you reveal the condition of your heart. If you are all about just, you know, um, superficial things, shallow things, um, then let that reveal to you that, that you might need to let your heart live a little more and go a little deeper and be a little bit more satisfied with who you are in God. And, and uh, you know, there, there's a better quality of life than that. And I just want to encourage you to just really reach out for it. You know, it's it's not about what you can get. It's really about love and just enjoying the journey of relationship while we're here on this earth and loving others. And that's God's true treasure. So I just wanted to encourage you to live a, a completely satisfied life. Let the Lord guide and direct you. Actively seek right standing with him and what he would have you do and hunger and thirst for righteousness, and then let God satisfy your very soul. Um, there's another scripture that says that uh, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, I believe it's Psalms 37, 4, 
that he will give us the desires of our heart. And God knows what our deepest desires are. And uh, they're good. You know, there's good, good desires deep in our heart. And so let's delight ourselves or find ourselves delighting in God and in the things of God. And let him bring to pass all the great desires of our heart. He is more than able and he is ready to truly bless you. So all we have to do is, like I said, it's simple. Uh, all we have to do is just be found loving him and uh, doing what's right, choosing him, choosing to do what's right, and not letting those petty, vengeful things get in our way. They're not worth it. They're destroyers, and the enemy uses them to destroy families and lives. So put those behind you. That's the old, that's the old life, and, uh, and really reach for something better. Um, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we'll hide your word in our heart and we'll not sit against you, Lord God. Help us to do better, Lord God, to cry out to you in times of hurt or frustration, not trying to fix it ourselves, Lord God, but going to you for the fix. We love you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you are all that we need to make our lives so much better, Lord God. You give us complete satisfaction. You're the one that gives us the instruction and the guidance to live our life well, Lord God, and to, to be truly satisfied. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time.